Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Lee Valley beading plane. It's off of the E press and beading and reading plane. They call this the cast scratch stock. Stick with me. All right, so here it is. Let's get some of these stats out of the way. So to buy this tool, it is $39.50 and it comes with these three different cutters. So the first cutter here, I've already honed these, so you're gonna see that they're already honed, but this one right here is just a single point. It creates a V groove that looks like this one right here. That's a bead, so ignore that one. It's just this line right here. That's what the V groove looks like. And then this is the beading one. And the bead looks like that. Okay. And then it also comes with a blank one. Now what you can do with the blank one is you can draw whatever profile you want, file that profile out, and then you have basically whatever you want. It's custom, so you can customize it to whatever you want, which I like that a lot. You can also do that to the backs of these. So you can have double-sided cutters. Just be careful that you don't cut yourself if you go on top of the plane. But you can definitely profile these to whatever you want. Now, you have additional options. So you can buy, they offer a ton of different cutters for this. So there's three different beading ones, three different fluting ones. The fluting one is the same thing as the bead. It's just indented instead of bumped up like that bead is right there. You can also get reading cutters, which when Alex got this for me, on that note, I have to give a shout out to our patron Alex because he sent this to me as a gift so I could do the video and because I wanted one for myself. So Alex, thank you so much for supporting the channel, not only this way, but also as being one of my patrons. I appreciate it more than you know, and I hope this video helps you learn to use this thing because they are a lot of fun. When Alex got this for me, he included two reading irons that, irons that he sent me as well. So reading is basically just multiple beads. That's this right here. This is a read of three. I, I don't know if that's what they call it, but that's what I'm gonna call it. So that's what those do. Then again, the single point and then the replacement blank cutter, which is the one that you can profile to whatever you want. If you get the master set, that's three beading of different size, three fluting of different size, and two reading of different size. That's eight cutters, and it is $29.40. So that's an option as well, or you can buy these separately. So like Alex got me these two, that was separate. You can buy the three fluting ones separate, buy them individually, whatever. They have a ton of different options for these. The next stat I wanna look at is actually the like dimensions of the plane, I guess. So it's five inches long and five eighths wide. The other thing you're gonna notice about it is the bottom is curved, can you see that? I like that the bottom is curved because while you're using this plane, you have to angle it and then eventually work your way up to 90 degrees. So I like that they profiled that. It just makes it smoother to roll across the wood. This right here is a fence that goes into different positions. So you can put it closer or farther away from the cutter. The cutter goes in right here. All you do is you loosen this screw, slide the fence where you want it, okay? And then lock it down. The cool thing about this fence too is the fence is curved. Can you see that? So you don't have to just do straight boards. You can also do curves with this or circles with this. So I really like that they included that. While you're setting this plane up though and referencing it onto the board to figure out where you want it, make sure you're measuring from the middle because if you measure from the edges, it's gonna be slightly off if your project needs that level of accuracy. This is called the lever cap, the same thing as a hand plane. So let me take this screw out. This is called the lever screw. Lever cap. That right there is the blade bed. Whoa. And then these are called the wings. All right, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is hone your cutters. Honing these irons is probably going to be one of the easiest things that you're ever going to hone, okay? So I got a fresh one here. I'm going to show you because my other ones are honed, so I wanted to show you like fresh from the package how to get this done. So let me get this out of here. So there's our cutter. Grab your stone. So this stone is the find, find. This is the fine diamond stone. And then I just use some window cleaner. It's not even Windex, this is the knockoff brand. It doesn't matter. If you're fancy, you can use Windex. So just spray it on there. And then when you hone these, 
you're not actually, some people think you're taking a file to these points, you're not. All you have to do is basically flatten, flatten here, flatten here, and then you're good to go. So throw it down on your stone. I use points of contact over here. It doesn't really matter. You don't need heavy pressure with these, and then you just go to town. Um, the manual will tell you to do figure eights, but I'm not, well, I'm doing pretty good right now, but I'm usually not that coordinated with them, so I just kind of go in circles, forward and backwards. Check my progress. And then there we go. See that tip? See how it's honed just right in here? That's all you need because we're not using these sides, so that doesn't matter. You just want this point to be honed. See that? All right, so I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. All right, check my progress. There we go. See how just that tip right there? Just the tip of stone. That's all I care about. And there you go. We're done. So if this was a fluting one where it had multiple points, you do want all of the points to match. If you can see where like in here it's not honed. I can catch it in the light. So in there it's not honed. Up here it is. That's what you want for all of them. You want all of the points to match. So if they don't, then what you do is you just keep at it. Maybe add a little bit more juice if you need to. And keep going until everything matches. It does not take long at all. I have not experimented with different stones. This is the fine one. I have not gone coarser. I have gone finer. And I tend to like fine better. Extra fine for some reason. I just, maybe it just took longer. But I didn't really notice a difference with the scratches. The next step is planning out what you want to do. And the project piece that it's going to be on. So if you look here at this one, I did not go all the way to the ends. The ends get difficult with this kind of a plane because it's just scratching the wood. It's not like a hand plane that it just kind of like flows with it. So you have options. You can try it and see if you're okay with it. I personally don't like it. So what I do is I just waste the ends of the boards. So I just cut it off, cut it off here, and then the middle in here, that's my project piece. The other thing you can do that I've never actually tried is starting in the middle and working your way out. That's something that they talk about in the little like manual that they give you. If you don't want to waste the ends of the board or you have to use the entire board, start at the middle, work your way, scratch, 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 scratch until it all meets, scratch, 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 scratch until it all matches, not meets. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have never used one of these before, I am going to recommend that you practice on uh, maple. This was on cherry. And I mean, obviously it can be done. You can scratch any piece of wood, but maple is a great thing to practice on. I personally don't like practicing on pine, but if you're in budget constraints, then go ahead and do that. Use a practice piece before you just dive into using this on a project because there is no other tool like it. This is one of a kind. Um, I mean, there's other beaters, but you know what I mean. If you've never used a beating plane or a reading plane, my recommendation is to practice on maple if you can. So that's the board that we're going to use. And let's start with, let's just do a V groove. I'm going to show you guys the V groove first, and then we'll move into other ones. When you put the iron in here first, make sure it's snug, but that you can still move the cutter around because you're going to want to make sure it's not sticking too far out of the bottom of the plane or it's not too far into the bottom of the plane. And I tried to capture this in camera multiple times. It just doesn't want to, well, now it focuses. That's actually pretty good. Let me scoot it back a little bit. So there we go. That looks good to me. So I'm going to tighten it down. I'm still going to show you in the Lee Valley manual because they have a really good picture of it. So when you get to the beading ones, you don't want these walls to stick out, but you still need the bottom of, or excuse me, well, yeah, technically the bottom of this bead to stick out of the plane. So let me show you what that looks like. So right here, they're showing you it's too low. That's good. See how it's just under there? You can just see the top of the bead. And then that right there is too high because if you do it that way, all you're going to get is two points. It's not going to be an actual bead. So reference this in the manual if you have one. If not, screenshot this now. So that we have it for future reference. 
All right, so we got our cutter set up. Did I tighten it down? I think I tightened it down. I did. All right, so let me show you how this one works. All right, so we got our maple clamped up. Um, you do want to make sure that you leave room that you're not going to hit if you're going to try to use the entire board. If you're not going to use the entire board, then don't worry about your dogs here. Now, I'm going to try a couple different camera angles because, like I said before, you're going to start by scratching it and then slowly work your way to 90 degrees. So it could be this way, slowly work your way to 90, this way, slowly work your way to 90. Um, I will do different angles so you can see, like, I'll probably get an angle from going that way so you can see me actually using it. I was trying to go from the sides, but my hands get in the way because you're holding it. So you couldn't really see the angle. So I do apologize for the, <laughs> the angle that you have right here, but this is going to be the best way that I'm going to show you. So to set your fence, just loosen it. And then remember, this fence is rounded. So when you're using it as your reference area, make sure you go for the middle and don't touch the cutter. <laughs> make sure you go for the middle and not the sides because it will be different. I just want to go towards the middle of the board. That looks good to me there. What I do is just pinch it with your fingers, tighten it down. You can set the fence wherever, however close you want, whatever, okay? To start, you can push and pull this one because this blade is at 90 degrees. So you can push it, or excuse me, you can push it or you can pull it. Do you see how I flipped it like that? So pulling it, it's aiming towards me. Pushing it, it's aiming away from me. So that's what you need to decide. You can literally go like this if you want to and keep doing that until you work yourself to 90. But when you're pushing, push away, pull towards. See that? You'll notice it too because if you go to pull like this, you're going to see it just digging in and it's not really going to work right. Because remember, you're just scratching, so you're going to be doing a lot of light, light passes with this. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to pull it towards me. You want to put a lot of pressure towards the fence, so the fence is against the board, to establish that kerf. Once that's established, you can put a little bit more downward pressure on the plane, but it's kind of like a marking gauge. Same thing. Put a lot of pressure against the fence, and I'm going to go ahead and make my mark. And there we go. Okay. Then see, I'm going to go this way, again, this way, let me see if that's at the depth that we set it to, I'm not sure that it is. Nope. Now it is. So there you go. That right there is a V groove. See that? That's all you got to do. Now, some may argue that you can only go in one direction. I haven't noticed that to be the case. Um, as you saw, I was going back and forth with this. Now, granted, this is the easiest one to use. This, this point cutter is the easiest out of all of them to use because you're literally just making a V. The other ones, you're going to notice more resistance. With this one, there was little to no resistance if you're doing it appropriately. But they might say, only go like that. Oops, see, I didn't put pressure against the fence. I don't know if you guys can see that. But So that's the spear point. That's the easiest one. It's going to be the same concept with the other one. So let me show you the other ones. I'll do... Let's try a reed at this angle, and then I'll move the camera over, and we'll show you a bead. All right, there we go. We're set. I'm going to start cutting. Establish my kerf with a lot of pressure going towards the fence. I'm going to do that again because I didn't put enough pressure. There we go. I think you'll be able to tell this one has a lot more resistance than the spear point did because it's doing multiple cuts at the same time. And remember, it's just scratching. Okay. Okay. 
getting some dust in the, it looks like my cutter actually slipped. Let me get my hammer. I was getting too aggressive with it, so the cutter slipped into the body slightly, so I'm just gonna tap it. There we go. This does get jammed a lot. I wonder if that'll be different if I just go in one direction. Nope, still gets jammed. I think though we are established. Yeah, there we go. So that right there is the reed. I didn't get a dead center on the board, but I like it. All right, now I'm gonna do a bead and I'm gonna move the camera so you can see it on the other side. There you go. So there you have it. Hopefully this helped you learn how to use this tool. If you couldn't tell, I was having a lot of fun with it. I might still get flack for not just going in one direction and, and for actually going back and forth, but it's fun. I was having fun with it and you saw that it worked and it worked well. So have fun, experiment with it, try it out. Um, don't stress on honing the blades. Don't stress on the angles or anything like that. Just practice with it. You'll get used to it. Just remember to go in light passes and you'll feel when it's cutting. So you'll feel it cut, cut, cut. Okay, it stops. You know you need to tilt it up a degree. Cut, cut, cut. It stops. Tilt it up a degree until eventually you get to 90. So again, just practice with it. Have fun. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. Don't get too aggressive with it because this one tends to clog a little bit and the iron like to slip back. So just keep that in mind. Keep a little hammer. Um, you'll get the hang of it. Don't stress. And again, Alex, thank you so much. I love this thing and I am going to keep it and use it often. So thank you all. I hope you enjoyed and have a good day.